All right. Uh, next up is this one. So we have here a projectile problem, but this one is just shooting vertically up. Um, let's just leave the problem for here. We have a 10 kilogram projectile and it's fired vertically upward from the ground and with an initial velocity of 50 meters per second. Uh, the problem wants us to determine the maximum height and that should give you some clues already as to what you need to determine maximum height. So we were given two scenarios. A, if we're going to neglect air resistance or atmospheric resistance, and B, we um, have to consider the atmospheric resistance, which is uh, given this particular equation, um, Fd is equals to 0.01 V squared in newtons. For V here is the speed of the projectile in any instant measured in meters per second. Okay, so now that we know our given here, we'll start solving it the condition for A. So... For A, it's, it's a simple uh, kinematic problem, to be honest with you. And then I'm both coupled with our kinematic equation, so here we go. First things first is diagram. We know that there is a, there's a ball going upwards, so the weight should be pointing downwards, which is 10 times 9.8066. just so happened that it's just 9.801. That should be 98.066. And of course, there's an acceleration going upward. That's one. And uh, since there is no air atmospheric resistance, so it's not going to be shown here in the free body diagram so far as scenario A. And then next up is to come up with our solutions here. So we need we need to find the maximum height. So we're going to set up first our equations of motion. So we're going to deal with X. Uh, and in this case, we're going to deal with the Z axis. So we're just going to go roll with that or, or Y axis for that matter, depending on your perspective. So we're going to go with summation of uh, F sub Z equals to M A sub Z. And uh, for F sub Z, it's just simply equals to the uh, weight. So that's your uh, that's your Z axis force. And if here M, we have your 10 kilogram. And A Z is unknown. So there we go. And then simplifying the equation, A here will be negative 9.8066. This, you know, G is, it's, it's a projectile, it's supposed to be negative, negative 9.066 meters per second squared. Okay. Okay, not. And, and uh, to get the maximum height, it's supposed to be negative because it's going to be decelerating anyway. And it's going to hit a certain point where to get maximum height, your final velocity must hit equals to zero. So for that, uh, we can set up our equation using this particular formula. Uh, our VF is equals our VF is uh, VF squared. Since we don't have time here, what we can use is this particular formula. VF squared is equals to VI squared plus two AC Z. On this case, there are displacement here, and um, and Z here will be our maximum height. So we just replace it with Z equals to H. We know very well that at maximum Height, our final velocity is going to be zero. So we have 50 meters per second here as an initial velocity minus two times 9.8066, which will give us a height of 127 meters for our for our uh, scenario A. Now it's going to be a lot different if we're going to consider now the uh, air resistance, atmospheric resistance. So let's do that again. Pretty much the same kind of formula we're going to be using, but we got to do a little bit of calculus on the kinematic parts of it. So here. So this time, our FED will slightly look a little different considering now the atmospheric resistance. going to look like this. And then, of course, we have to get the uh, summation of forces on the on the z-axis or to, to set up our equations of motion. So it's going to be looking like that. And then isolating and simplifying our AZ is equal to this particular equation which we can plug it in on our kinematics. Uh, if you are recall, we're going to recall our equation. So for kinematics, uh, let me just write that down. That will be A is dV over dt. And then we have V, which is ds over dt. All we have to do is equate them by time, and we will have this particular equation. There we go. ADS, and it goes VdV. Substituting everything, we will get this particular line of equation, and we get the integral on both sides. 
we will have h is equals to 114 meters, 113 point something. But if you're rounded it off, it's going to be um, 114 meters. Next up is kind of like sample problem one, but this one is in the crate now here is totally inclined. Okay. Now we have here a motor and it's winding the cable. Let me just put it back to, uh, there we go. It's winding the cable at constant acceleration such that the 20 kilogram crate moves a uh, distance S is equals to 6 meters. So it's going to move 6 meters in just 3 seconds. Starting from rest. Okay, that should give you some clues already, meaning our initial velocity is 0. Now, we're here to determine now the tension developed in the cable. So we need the tension T here. Okay, and the, co uh, the, co the, coefficient, the coefficient of kinetic friction between the crate and the plane here will be at 0.3. All right. So our first task here is to definitely identifying, you know, what the givens are. So we have the find the kilogram crate. Let's just, uh, we just highlight that. I want to choose a color. Let's go with uh, yellow. Yeah. So we have a, we have a 20 kilogram crate. And there we have S is three seconds, and then time is three seconds. There we go. And uh, starting from rest, that should give you some clue that our initial velocity is zero. We need to determine the tension, so T is unknown. We're also given a kinetic of friction, which is 0.3. So that will be our friction force there. And then from there, we start first with our FPD to show our forces. So it's going to look like this. Just add the 30 degrees here. Uh, let me add that. So I wonder if I can, you know, zoom in. Yeah, there we go. All right, there we go. And then let's put some pen. Oh, it's not going to happen. Okay, so here we just simply add the 30 degrees. There we go, 30 degrees. So that we know our direction here. And then from there, we set up our equations. So in this case, we can actually solve first the kinematics part. We're already given the displacement, we're given time, we have initial velocity, so we can determine technically our acceleration. And using our formula, S is equals to initial velocity times time plus AT squared over 2. We can isolate this since we're, most of it is unknown. This one, initial velocity is 0. Our S is 6 meters. Our time here is 3 seconds. And A is unknown. That will be 4 over 3 meters per second squared. Or if we're going to you know, be precise about it, that's about 1.3333 meters per second squared. Okay. And then from here, we can just simply substitute this to our equations of motion, which is this one. And uh, so for F of F sub y equals uh, mass times a sub y. That will be our F of, F of y here. That will be an a. And that will be weight or mass times acceleration due to gravity time, uh, times cosine 30 degrees. That's fine. And, and, and uh, there's no uh, a y here. So that's going to be zero acceleration on the a y. So it's equal to zero. So you'll be able to solve the uh, perpendicular force that's going to be 169.86 and then now you substitute that on the x uh, plane that will be f of x equals to m of x that will be t minus the weight sine mg sine 30 degrees and then of course you have minus uh, our frictional kin our kinetic friction and then substitute here your perpendicular force 169.86 and then it goes to m times a and uh, all of which are given except T. So you just isolate T and you will get the answer at 176 newtons. That's essentially it.